Hello, uh, my name is Alexis Leonidas. Today I will be uh, presenting a study that done by a couple of um, uh, scientists in the Netherlands. Um, so yeah, so the ethics carried out my, <laughs> sorry, I'm presenting the aggression and affiliation during social conflict in pigs. So the ethics involved in this study, um, they were carried out in strict accordance to the European guidelines for accommodation and care of animals. Their protocol was approved by the Institutional Animal Care and Use Committee of Wagon Engine University. So, you know, everything was, they, nothing illegal was going on. They were, they were being treated well. So moving on to our methods. Um, a total of 384 total pigs uh, were, were used for the study. Uh, they were, this, the study began once they hit the nine weeks of age. Uh, they were housed in 64 pens, as you can see right here. There, there's an example of a, of a pen, of a pig pen. Um, they were offspring of 64 T.O. pigs, 20 so, and 24 tempo boars. Now what that means is, uh, two pigs twenty. It's like an. It's kind of like a, a parent so that produces large number of high quality pigs. So it's kind of like food for the pigs and tempo boars. They're just a type of of uh, of boar that excels in vitality in its progeny. It's fast growing, strong, and robust. <clears throat> so. Um. The temple bores were selected on either high or low indirect effects of, for growth, IgE, G, and the pigs were housed in groups of six uh, of the same IgE, G classification, three females and three castrated males. IgE, G is a breeding value that accounts for the genetic effect that a pig may have on the growth rate of its numbers. As far as the housing went, half of each IgEG group was housed in barren pens, and the other half was contained in enriched pens. Um, so I guess the difference between, you can see that barrens are a little less, um, I guess, fancy. They had 60% solid concrete floor and 40% slatted floor as opposed to the enriched pens where they had a solid floor with a deep litter bedding of straw and wood shavings. Each pen, however, had a single space feeder and a nipple drinker. Um, so they performed the regrouping test, and what that was essentially is two pigs from, from each pen, there were two familiar pigs, that is, pigs that they were going to um, mark and they were a male and a female and they were relocated into an unfamiliar pen joined by two other pairs of pigs who also originated from two different pens so pretty much there was three groups of two and you know they didn't know uh, each other except the one that they came with um and after 24 hours they were returned to their original pen, where they had first uh, came from, and fresh skin lesions immediately were recorded. That like any injuries, possible, and as we'll see later on, were due to uh, stress and just uh, aggressiveness within the pen. So they also did this thing called spatial distribution. Um, the data for this was gathered during the regrouping test. Um, pretty much a video camera was set up and it recorded the, the entire process of the regrouping test. So every hour um, from the moment that the, pen, that the pigs had entered the pen, a screenshot was made. However, a screenshot was only made if, if uh, four out of the six pen four out of the six pigs in the pen were lying down, laying down. Um, and this is kind of hard to picture, but what they did was for each pen, a grid 
with corresponding x and y coordinates was made at an appropriate scale to be overlaid on the video playback so they can later uh, with rulers that were also placed alongside the pen of course with um, appropriate scales as well uh, to allow them to calculate um, some distances and they eventually did and a distinction was made when be was made between a familiar pig and the four unfamiliar pigs. They also per, um, performed a blood collection and haptoglobin determination. So haptoglobin is a phase protein that is essentially a, serves as a bio, biomarker for stress. So it's like a stress indicator. Um, so the pigs were sampled before were blood sampled in the week before the regrouping test, so week eight, and then at the third day after they turned nine weeks because apparently haptoglobin may peak several days after the initial stressor. I don't really know why. Um, blood was uh, collected in a serum tube, shown there, uh, and stored at room temperature. The samples were then incubated for one hour at 37 degrees Celsius or you know, room temperature. And thereafter, it, uh, centrifuge at 20 degrees Celsius. Um, then, 100, milli 100 microliters of hemoglobin was added to the sera um, in 7.5 microliter increments and gently mixed. Thereafter, um, a chromogen, uh, a substance that can readily uh, be converted into a dye, 140 microliters of that was um, added to the solution and was incubated at five minutes for five minutes at room temperature. Um, the concentration of haptoglobin uh, milligrams per milliliters was calculated with a standard linear curve for known concentrations of haptoglobin. Um, so the data preparation. So the distance between two spatial coordinates was calculated using a squared plus b squared equals c squared, um, uh, in which a equals uh, pig one minus pig two, where x, where pig one is the x coordinate of one pig and pig two is the x coordinate of another pig. Um, a relative distance between familiar and unfamiliar pigs was calculated by dividing the average distance to the unfamiliar pigs by the distance to the familiar pig. And the way they calculated this was the distances to the four unfamiliar pigs were averaged, resulting in one value for the distance to the familiar pig and one value for the average distance to the unfamiliar pigs. They also performed what's known as a principal component analysis. Um, the behavioral and physiological data uh, correlated with Pearson co cor was pre uh, correlated with Pearson correlation on a general linear model of ten variables. Um, four showed significant correlation above 0.30, and due to this, a PCA was used to analyze the data. A PCA is a statistical procedure that uses um, an orthogonal transformation. In other words, uh, I believe it's displaying the information in sort of right angles. Uh, and it's used to convert a set of correlated val variables into a set of values linearly uncorrelated, of values linearly uncorrelated. Um, 